Hello my friends and welcome, welcome back. Yes, it's another session with the older man. So today I'm going to hit on one of our favorite topics. Let's talk money. Let's talk money. Let's talk money. Let's talk money. With the older man, he's got the wisdom, honey. Remember, remember whenever you're in doubt. Always asking an older man, he'll show you the right ride. Oh, the wisdom of the elders is gone. They seen it all deep into the eyes and the love. So let's talk money. Let's talk money. With the older man, you got the keys to success, honey. Yes. So you guys like my little jingle there? Come on. Come on. I need some feedback. Let me know if you like it. You think it's too long? I think I, I played out a little bit too long, but I, you know what? I like it. It's fun. But you know what? I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Let me know what you think. All right. So let's get into what we're going to discuss today. It's all about relationships and money. These are two things. It's like oil and water, you know? The emotions plus money always has a problem. The, the, these two things, when they clash, they, they tend to create a lot of problems. The number one reason why people get divorced isn't because of infidelity. It's usually financial stress. And this gentleman, what's his name again? Ah, this multimillionaire, he said it best. And let me know what you think about this. How long do you have to date someone, in your opinion, before you reveal your financial life? By the third date. Third. Here's why. If you're going out on the third date, you're interested in a longer term relationship. The number one reason, as you've aptly brought up, is not infidelity in a seven year period for divorce, which is 50%, it's financial stress. So you need to know the spending habits of your potential partner. And if they outspend you, you will eventually have a failed relationship. So I think you talk money yeah. right after the second glass of wine on date three. <laughs> right there. Three. What are you worth? How what much debt you, you have? Are you a good bankrupt? And yeah, man, this guy is serious. Let's talk money on date number three. Yeah, you got to know what kind of debt she's in, what kind of debt he's in. The chances of a woman being in more debt than a man is 80% versus 20%. That's the national average. Don't come at me, ladies. 80% of women care the massive amount of the national average consumer debt, including student loans. So gentlemen, it's very important for you guys to understand a woman's spending habits because here's how women like to do finances. If I can pay for all the things that I am consuming, plus pay my credit card debt, student loan debt, mortgage consumer debt, I am fine because they have no sense of long-term vision, you see. So they tend to say, okay, I'm, I'm the boss B because I can pay all of my bills. I pay all my bills. I don't need a man. Yes, but how much are you investing? Are you investing anything? Because if you make 10000 a month, I'm just throwing out a round figure, and you're spending 10000 a month, you're not doing well, my dear. If you're living expenses and taking care of your debt, meaning you have overspent in the past, and you're facilitating your debt, meaning you're maintaining your debt, that understand what debt is. Debt is money that you have spent that you never had. That's what that means. You have consumed way more money than you actually have. So you're not in a better position than anyone else just because you can show that you were consuming stuff. So gentlemen, you got to see that the woman not only can take care of herself, does she have any investments? How much debt does she have before you commit to her? You've got to understand these things. I don't know about three dates. <laughs> I mean, how many people know that they're going to be with someone long term after three dates? Uh, I doubt. I doubt it. You can see through a few problems and say, OK, you know what? I, I, can, I can probably have a longer term relationship with this woman or this man. Let me see how it run. And during the course of two to three months, then you guys can talk about finances. But on date three, yeah, 
that's not cool to start talking about money. You can hint at it, but so how much do you make? So what do you, what do you what do you make? What do you do? Uh, that will kill the vibes a lot. So if you guys want any success with relationships, I would not advise that. You know, men who are billionaires, they can do that shit. All right, let me show you this next one. I want I want I want you guys to understand females' logic, okay? Because this is the problem that we have. We have women who think that if you don't have enough money, you don't deserve to be married. You don't deserve to be happy with anyone else. Listen to this woman's logic. If a man thinks that the economy is so bad that he can't afford a family without women's help, then duh, he shouldn't have a family. It's like if you can't afford a car, then don't buy it. Don't ask women to pay half of it. Stop using equality or feminism as an excuse to get women to sponsor men. It's embarrassing. So basically she's saying if you're broke, meaning if you cannot afford to take care of a woman and a family, don't get married. And the thing is, most men live by that law because we know one thing is very clear. When a man makes money, he now knows that he could provide for his wife and child. The difference between men and women is when men make money, we understand that we could provide for a family. When women make money, they say a lot of the things you guys have said. We're independent, we're bosses, we don't need men. Men don't make money for the purposes of being independent. As a matter of fact, it's the other way around. We make money for the purposes of other people to be dependent on us. Yep. And it's, it's been said many times. Been, it's been said many times before. The modern woman, her desire is to just make for herself. A modern woman with money is the most selfish thing you'll ever come across. Because it's all about her and what else she can buy and what else she can get. It's not about family, my friends. It's never about family. I've never heard a woman say, yet oh i just need to make enough money so i can take care of my husband and provide for him and his and my kids never i've never heard the words come out of a woman's mouth now that's an old traditional way of looking at life right the, the issue with these so-called modern women is that they want the traditional man but they don't want to act traditional so her money is her money your money is her money as well. That's how she looks at it. So gentlemen, don't let these women guilt you into this crap. Because in today's environment, it is literally impossible for the average man to provide for a wife and two kids. It's literally impossible unless he is in the top 20% earning capacity. So that means that 80% of the men, she's basically saying, can't get married. 80% of the male population isn't qualified to get married. That's what she's basically saying. Now, how asinine is that shit? But this is the kind of stuff women are listening to on the, online. I'm going to read a few comments just so that you guys can hear what other people are saying. Tano One said, For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. I feel sorry for her husband. I don't know. Don't know if she's married, but wow. Yeah. I don't know why she would even say something like this. Mem Piss Rowling said, So, a man asking a woman to pay half is bad? But a woman asking a man to pay for all is not? Can she afford a family? If she can't even affo afford part of it? Yeah, th these are great questions, you know? Can she afford a family if she can't even afford part of it? The answer should be no. She should stay alone, go buy a dog, a cat, find herself a little apartment and stay alone because if she's looking for a man to provide all of it why why does she deserve that you see back in the day man i mean women used to work hard at home everything was manual labor today's day and age everything is technology a roomba will vacuum the floor washing machines washer dryer everything is mechanized women don't have to do any freaking work what cooking Man, I got an Insta pot downstairs. I got an Insta fryer. I got a fryer, an air fryer. Got an oven. I do all of that stuff and I can do it quickly. Women want the easy life and the man should be the pack mule, the workhorse. Go out and work for me. And that brings me to another issue that I'm currently having. One of the big issues that I am seeing a lot of men going through right now. Because even when a man has the money in doing it right, 
the women have no, no respect for him, man. So a gentleman wrote in to me on Instagram uh, just this morning, and I asked him if I could share his story, and he said, yeah, go ahead. So this gentleman sent me a message this morning, and he said, listen, man, I'm, I'm upset because I found some messages on my wife's computer. Listen, I've taken the message because he sent me in writing, and I have converted it into audio because I don't want you guys to listen to my voice all the time. So this is an AI-generated voice on his exact message, all right? So let's have a listen. Please help me. My wife of 12 years has been very disrespectful of me behind my back. I only recently found that she cheated on me several times before we got married, and she has kept in touch with the man she cheated on me with and other ex-boyfriends on social media and WhatsApp all along. From the time she cheated on you, before you got married, you should never, ever have pulled the trigger, my friend and marry that. You should never have done it. You don't ever give a woman a chance once she's cheated because then she has you. She knows that she can get away with it. And so fast forward 12 years, All let's hear along. what else he has to say. Even after I put boundaries early in the relationship that she cannot be friends with her exes, I do not know for sure if she slept with anyone else after we got married, but I do know she kept in touch and would do silly errands for them if they asked her. We have two children, 12 and 8, married with a community of property. And I know I messed up because a divorce would totally wreck me. I was naive and loyal to her all this while, running away from women that would throw themselves at me because I was honoring her and our relationship marriage. I earn more than her and have two other side businesses on top of job. The way I found out, her laptop was giving issues, so I set aside time to help her with it. And while working on it, I found a chat folder in her emails with messages from these men. They would talk about how they had great times together, how they should go on holiday alone together, so that they can have some great time together, and how the sex they had back in the day was amazing, and that it was unfortunate that they are both married to different people now, but they would always cherish each other in their hearts. The confusing part is that outside of finding out we have a good family life, the kids are happy. She is pleasant to me. She takes care of me. We have sex regularly. We have family events. So I am not sure where it went wrong. Boss, once a hoe, always a hoe. The reality of life, my friend, is that you saw the devil and you married her. She showed you who she was. You ignored who she was and you gave her the biggest freaking gift. You married her. There are certain women that are not marriage material, my friend. Now, here's the thing. And this is the advice I gave him. He's pretty much screwed because infidelity is not a case for divorce in America. Okay? There's no fault divorce. He knows that he's screwed. 50% of everything will be gone. 12 years marriage, two kids. Yeah, he's on the hook big time. There's nothing for him. He didn't protect himself before the marriage. If he has built what they have acquired over the 12 years, he's screwed because half of it is hers. He can go total annihilation and nuke everything by bankrupting himself so that she gets nothing, but then he would suffer as well. He's going to suffer anyway because that's the reality of it. He's going to lose at least 50%. So you could either bite the bullet and lose 50%, walk away and say, listen, I learned an expensive lesson. All right. That's what most guys would do. And the other move is simply this. You show her that you have found out about her nasty ways. And you tell her, listen, if you want to do what you want to do, you do it. But I'm going to do what I want to do as well. I'm going to have other women. If you want to go do your thing, you go do your thing. Sure, she might divorce you, but well, you're back to square one. So you either divorce her or she's going to divorce you. Either way, you're going to lose financially. That's all I'm trying to get across to you. So now you have your dignity. You, you need to keep your dignity intact. So you go out and you silently get your lover. If everything is good at home, then do your thing. If she's treating you well at home, my friend, great. Here's the reality of it, man. She's not treating you bad. This is the thing. She's managing her whole life and she's treating her husband good. It's a hard one to call, man. It's a hard one to call. You knew the devil before you freaking married her. She's been the wife. 
she's doing the thing right. She's being a good wife and if she's being a good mother, you don't want to break that up because you have kids. She's doing the right thing if she's a good mother and she's being a good wife. It's just that she has a secret life on the side. So this puts you in a very odd predicament because most of the time when women are doing their outside business, they're, they are ignoring their inside business. They're not taking care of the family, but she's doing it the right way. And, and I say that simply because if I was to advise a man, that's what I would advise him as well. So I don't want this talking money segment to be about relationships, but money is involved here because that's the only thing that you're concerned about at this point. If you walk away, you're going to lose a lot of money. I'll play this one for, for a bit of humor, but... <laughs> But it shows you what divorced men have to go through. This is a day in the life of a divorced dad. At 9 a.m., I wake up on my mattress on the ground. For breakfast, I grab my ketchup so I can put it on my first microwave potato of the day. I eat in silence next to my roommate, Gary. He moved in because I couldn't afford my mortgage. Every straight single adult male's roommate is unnecessarily hairy. Around 11 a.m., something strange happens. I have a feeling. I immediately bottle it up and ignore it forever. At noon, I look over some divorce documents while Gary loudly watches adult videos. For lunch, I eat another microwave potato. This meal is the only warmth I know. At two, I go through Instagram and DM college girls. I may be past my prime with no money, connections, sexual endurance, or personality, but... At 3 p.m., my shrew of an ex-wife drops off my failed son, Tyler. Me and her have a calm discussion about a few private matters. Some days, I don't know why I fought so hard for joint custody. Tyler wants to be a rapper. Man, I swear, my dad keeps testing me. I'm going to turn around tell the cops he molested me. Hey, he's starting to get pretty good. At 6 p.m., it's time for dinner. I put a potato in the microwave for three minutes. The skin becomes rough and wrinkled, much like me, burning hot on the inside like the rage left in me from the divorce. I offer half my potato to my son. No butter, no seasoning. He declines. Clearly, his mother has been spoiling him. I leave my ex-wife an angry voicemail about how she ruined my life. After a few hours of sobbing, I slip into a food coma. I will sleep here until morning. And that's my day. <laughs> oh, man. I don't mean to laugh, but I've been through divorces. I get it. You know, I didn't do that, man. I kept myself in shape. I kept going, but it's funny anyway point is, is that a lot of women just don't understand what men go through after they've ripped them apart. Divorce is not a nice place to be. I'm telling you, first two to three years is a nightmare as a man try to get himself back together. Quick Google search says mm -hmm. that your net worth is $350 million. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Um, I don't even know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't discuss such things. As someone who's... <laughs> had money, mm -hmm. lost, lost money, money, then had it again bigger yeah. than he ever imagined. Are you good with money now? Are you working on getting better? What's your relationship like with money? This is the downsize phase uh, of my life. The first half of my life was gather, gather, gather. Mm -hmm. And the second half of my life is going to be, you know, give, 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 give. give. Once you've bought everything you want and there's literally nothing on earth that you want to buy i just wish that was a gift that everybody could have because there's there's nothing that material can do to satisfy you when you realize that no relationship that no money that no kids no that like there's literally nothing that can make you happy you got to make happy in here you got to make happy in here with none of that stuff. Mm. It's, it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. <laughs> and he's absolutely right. Now, I say to you, you don't have to have 350 million to feel that way. You literally don't have to have that feeling of constant want. This is the problem that most of us have is that we constantly look at other people and we want something else. And it's a constant urge to get it when in reality, most of us are happy, food, shelter, good health, and someone to love. That's it. That's it. And of course, a good source of income where you don't have to worry about all of the necessary things that I just mentioned. I just wanted to share that with you guys because you guys have to understand you have to have a healthy relationship with money. So my friend who's having a problem with his wife, you might have to learn how to live with 50% less if you got the basics, food, shelter, security, someone to love you. You already have your kids. 
yeah, you'll be fine, my friend. You'll be fine. Or you can just live with the, the, the woman you know. If she's a good mother, don't leave her until the kids have left and became adults. Here's how women think. If there's anything I've learned in life, it's that there's always a reason to be unhappy. We get the guy, but we don't get the ring. We get the ring, but then we don't have enough money for the house. We get the house, but then we don't have the renovated kitchen. We get the kitchen, but then our neighbors show us their bigger kitchen. So we move to a bigger house with a bigger kitchen. Now we have the bigger kitchen, but we have less time because we're too busy slaving away at jobs we hate to afford the bigger kitchen. So we take time off from work. But then we worry about keeping the kitchen. So we go back to work and then worry about the promotion that someone else got while we were taking time off from work. And then we get the promotion, but then we have even less time to enjoy our freaking kitchen. And I don't know where this kitchen analogy came from. But all of this is just to say that more is not always more. And if you're looking for a reason to feel like you're not enough or you don't have enough, you will always find it. Never forget that there was a version of you in your past who would have been proud to know you're living the life you have now, even if you don't have as much as some random person on the internet or the woman next door who probably never sees her husband anyways because he's too busy working to pay for the kitchen. I hope you remember that there are just as many, if not more, reasons to be happy if you would only stop looking for joy in everyone else's life other than yours. And most of all, I hope you know that you can't hold on to the gift of the present if you're always chasing what the future could hold. Oh, I wish he had said that without the whole makeup thing. Oh, I hate these makeup videos. But she was busting some facts there for sure. She brought the message home. Ladies, you have to stop looking for a bigger kitchen. I like her analogy. I'm going to use that one. The kitchen. Okay. The man that you have is enough. The kids that you have is enough. Simple, man. So I want us to watch this last little one here. And it's, it shows you the audacity of a woman and how she sees men, how selfish she is when it comes to money in a relationship. This is a woman who left her husband. And anyway, listen to it. Now, don't listen to me. Am I the asshole for refusing to pay child support to my ex-wife for our children so she and her husband can save for their other kids? Ooh. My ex-wife and I are the parents of a daughter who is 17 and a son who is 15. We share custody of our kids 50-50. Wow. Neither of us pays child support because we have equal time with the kids. I opened up bank accounts for my kids when each were born, and I have saved from then. The money I have now saved for them will help them tremendously in their futures, whether they go to college or not. My ex-wife remarried several years ago. Her stepdaughter is 16. She's got a nephew of her husband's they are raising who was 14. And she has a seven and a five year old with her husband. Ex-wife wanted to talk to me about college for our kids. I told her that our kids would have the option if they wanted it because I have saved more than a healthy amount for them. A few days after this talk, she called me and alongside her husband said that they would like me to pay child support for our kids so that they can save more money for their other children's futures. Oh no. I told her I was not going to pay her child support just so she could support the other children in her home. Her husband husband told me I could always offer to split the money between all of the children. What? I told him I was oh, not paying no. for his kids to go oh, to college. No. Mm -hmm. Ex-wife called me cruel and said keeping 50-50 and paying money so our kids siblings can go to college should be a no-brainer for me. What? I told her the day I have an obligation to help her support her entire household is a day in another universe where we never <laughs> broke up. And she has to accept she is equally responsible for our kids as me. They both told me I was an ass. Even though I feel I'm not crazy, I must be. Nope. Am I it blows my mind a woman's mentality. Oh, you had the foresight to save for our two kids. Now I have divorced you. I've gone with another man and we have two kids and a nephew. And because you were good enough to have saved for our kids, can you share some of that money so that all of my kids can go to college? What? You want me to pay for another man's seed after you left my ass? You left the responsible, forward-thinking, hard-working man to go to find the Chad that can't afford to pay for his kids and yours? Are you out of your... F Man, you see how women think with this shit? It blows my mind the more I listen to the internet, the more I realize that, wow, I have a pretty normal life. My wife and I say the same thing all the time. We are pretty normal people. We have this argument all the time that, oh, none of my friends think like that. None of my friends think like that. And I keep telling her all the time, our circle is extremely small. You have no idea what goes on in this world. People are nuts. And besides that, most of us don't even know what's going on in other people's secret life. There might be a serial killer among us. We don't, we have no idea. That's my point. Yeah, you think about it. We all think that we know the people around us. We don't. But I love when the internet brings it out so that I can see the true nature of humanity. And for that, I'm glad that you guys actually 
tune in and, and, and learn a little bit about it. So guys, listen, I'm going to stop it here because I just wanted you guys to feel the choices you have when it comes to divorce. I want you to understand that, hey man, female nature and money and relationships and money, it's a serious issue. The number one reason for divorce is stress from money, finances. Be careful who you get involved with, whether you're male or female. I'm not picking on women alone. Male or female, understand how much debt the person has. That's important. Because when you get married, please understand, you're not only getting involved with that person's assets, you're also taking on their liabilities. Please understand that. Whether you're going to pay it directly or indirectly, legally, it's still yours. Because, listen, if the, if the wife isn't paying her debt and the debt collectors come, who do you think she's going to be calling on to help her? Honey, guess what? I can't pay this debt this month. Can you help me out? Can you help me? And you know what? The husband's going to have to step up. So you're going to get forced into it. So please realize, do not step into a marriage with another woman if there's significant debt involved. Same thing, ladies. Understand what a man has and what he owns. Gentlemen, make sure, make sure you have a trust and make sure you have a prenup set up before you get married, long before the wedding date. Make sure that she's not signing it under duress. All right, make sure that you're operating under the trust at all times when it comes to assets. Make sure you have a post nut, not post nut, a post nuptial. Post meaning after you've gotten married, make sure that you guys have an agreement. Hey, we are going to buy this. You are contributing 10%. I'm contributing 90 as the man. We're going to sign an agreement that if we divorce, that you get 10% and I keep my 90%. That is a postnuptial agreement. You can do that. You can have agreements, written agreements. Operate your marriage like a business as well. Make sure that you have a romantic part of your relationship and also a financial part of your relationship. And so we're going to try to keep these two things separate. If you guys can have a rational discussion about these things, do it. You might have to negotiate for her to sign it. Say, listen, okay, you're only putting in 10%, but if we get a divorce, I'm going to give you 25%. Ah, she'll more likely sign it then. Or you can say, listen, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it then. So the whole family suffers. Then what you do is you get your trust to buy it. Your trust buys it. She don't have to know shit about it. Because you didn't buy it. It was a trust that bought it. Huh? Ha <laughs> ha! Guys, you, 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 you all have to learn how this shit works, man. So listen, subscribe if you haven't already. Please hit the notification bell. Like the video on your way out if you've gotten this far. And of course, if you need to talk to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, book a session by going to askanolderman.com and you'll see how easy it is, how inexpensive it is for you to have a discussion with me. All right? So guys, until next time, remember... Whenever in doubt, always ask an older man. I'll see you soon. Cheers.